I realize that those of you who are seeing variational calculus for the first time, your heads are probably spinning right about now. And you, like me, and probably like most of us, could really benefit from the use of an example. In order to get us kicked off, we'll take the most simple of examples where, in order to minimize the distance between two points, we will treat this as a path minimization problem in the context of what we've seen of the calculus of variations and the Euler-Lagrange equation. As before, we start off with two points. The first one we'll call point A, which is at a location x1, y1. And the second point, point B, is at a location x2, y2. We will assume for now that we know the solution to this problem and that the minimum distance between these two points on a plane is a straight line. We'll draw this in green, and we'll assume that this is the exact solution which we'll call y of x. And while this is a very simple problem, the reason it is useful is not only as a first demonstration of the calculus of variations, but also because it is indeed something we know the solution to, and therefore we can use it to benchmark the method, as it were, by seeing how it goes about producing an already known result. As I've shown in previous videos, in this case we'll define the integral i as the integral from x1 to x2 of just the path length, or the incremental path length, ds. I've shown this in a previous video, but I'll demonstrate it again. If this is the incremental path length, ds, we can complete this triangle by dropping the vertical and horizontal sides, and this is dx and dy. And then using Pythagoras, ds squared is equal to dx squared plus dy squared. Taking dx squared out as a common factor, we can write it as dx squared times 1 plus dy dx quantity squared. And then taking the square root of both sides, ds is equal to square root of 1 plus y prime squared, y prime for short. And so this allows us to rewrite i as the integral from x1 to x2 of square root 1 plus y prime squared dx. And that we know is just the length of the path, which we'll call L. And I'll remind you in the context of the previous video where we derived the Euler-Lagrange equations, we call this the functional f. And f in general is a function of x, the independent variable, y and y prime. Now, in going along with the calculus of variations, we create an arbitrary variation, which we'll draw in red, which we call eta, in fact, epsilon times eta. So this red path is a varied path, which we'll call y bar, and that is equal to the actual path, or the optimal path, y, plus epsilon times eta of x. And that, using our delta operation, the varied path is equal to the optimal path, or extremal, plus the variation. In order for i to be an extremal or a stationary point, its variation, del i, would have to be equal to zero. Let's give these some numbers, one, two, and three. Okay, and then we derive the Euler-Lagrange equation, which in its general form is partial f partial y minus d by dx of partial f partial y prime is equal to zero. Now, since we know our functional over here is only a function of y prime, I mean, y prime is a function of x, but it's not explicitly a function of x. It's explicitly only a function of y prime. In that case, this first term, df dy, becomes zero, and the remaining term, d by dx, of partial f partial y prime, implies if we integrate that with respect to x, yields partial f partial y prime is equal to a constant. Let's give these some numbers, 4 and 5. Before turning the page, let me just recap this again, just to make sure we're all clear. We have previously shown that for path minimization type problems, where we're minimizing the path from A to B, a path that minimizes some other function, then what we have shown is that we need to find our functional by setting up this integral and then plugging that into the Euler-Lagrange equations, which will yield an equation that can be solved for the shape of the path, y of x. Okay, so though that the actual path is y, we decided let's look at a varied path which we drew in red, previously shown that in order for i, which in this case is the length of the path, in order for the length of the path to be a stationary point, its variation must be zero, and that condition yields the Euler-Lagrange equation. So what we did is constructed the integral that we wanted to minimize, which in this case is just the length of the path, 
We've taken this functional and we've plugged it into the Euler-Lagrange equation. Because the functional is not a function of y explicitly, that term cancels out, this first term. And as a result, the remaining term can be integrated with respect to x and yields that partial f partial y prime is simply a constant. Why is this important? Well, we'll see that on the next page. So turning pages, we'll copy equation 5 here. Partial f partial y prime is equal to constant, and this is the equation that we need to solve. I'll remind you that our functional f is just equal to the square root of 1 plus y prime squared. We then substitute equation 6 into equation 5, which amounts to taking the derivative of f with respect to y prime gives us y prime divided by root 1 plus y prime squared, and that of course is equal to a constant. That is equation 7. And then it should be obvious just by inspection that the only way the left-hand side could equal a constant is if y prime itself is a constant. So, of course, if y prime is equal to c1, which is just dy dx, we can integrate that with respect to x, and lo and behold, y equals c1x plus c2, which is the equation for a straight line. Let's put a box around that, and we're done. So what this is telling us is that in order to satisfy the Euler-Lagrange equation, the path between a and b must be a straight line. And I'm sure you all know this, and you definitely don't need me to tell you, but you of course can find your constants c1 and c2 by applying your two boundary conditions. Okay, so I know I've just reviewed it, but I'm going to go through this again from the top, just to make sure we're all comfortable with this starter problem. Minimizing the distance, in this case the path length between two points on a plane, a and b, given by x1, y1, and x2, y2, we come up with the integral that depends on the path that we're trying to optimize. In this case, the integral is the path length. And what we found previously is that in order for this to be a stationary point, this functional must satisfy the Euler-Lagrange equation. In this case, because the functional is not a function of y explicitly, the first term of the Euler-Lagrange equation cancels out, with the result that the Euler-Lagrange equation reduces to simply partial f partial y prime is equal to a constant. When we plug this functional in here, we end up with this equation. This equation is satisfied by y prime is equal to constant, and when we integrate that we see it is in fact a straight line. Even if you didn't know that the shortest path between two points on a plane was a straight line, we've shown through variational calculus how you can now prove that. Anyway, that's all I want to say about this problem. I hope you found something useful in this discussion. If you have and you'd like to support this material, there are various ways you can do that. The first is simply to give us a like. This goes a long way to getting the video in front of other people. Or better still, if you be notified of future video releases, please hit the subscribe button below and click the bell icon. And if you have any questions, comments, or criticisms, or just found this plane boring, I'd like to hear from you in the comment section below. Thanks for watching, and I will catch up with you in the next one.